So I'm going to introduce you a little bit and then we'll just jump right into your talk. Uh, Artem is here to talk primarily about testing. And for anybody who hasn't met him yet or come across his content, uh, he's in Prague, but he's a software engineer. He loves API design, open source, and of course, testing. And in fact, just this last year, he was he was talking before we officially launched the event today, he was just saying he was here in Utah not too long ago for the first ever epicweb.dev conference, right? And yeah. uh, it's a, a conference that Kent C. Dodds has largely organized to help put on. I'm sure he has a team that helps him, but um, can't go wrong where Kent C. Dodds is involved. So great stuff there. But you came and you were an instructor and were helping people to basically improve their their skills on automated testing from what i understand is that accurate yeah yeah that's correct cool okay and then that's what we are we're lucky enough to be able to have you here for is to share what you know about testing and share that expertise with us as well so eager to hear it but yeah i know i'm i feel bad i actually have not given you the heads up that i was planning to ask this question. So it's okay if, if you don't want to answer That's it okay. or you want to answer it at the end. But I always like to ask our, our developer speakers, when you hear the word quality programmer, what does that look like and feel like to you? So what how would you define being a quality software engineer? Mm. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's, it's a cooperation of hard and soft skills. You obviously have to be proficient at what you do to be able to do your job, do it well. But I think it's like some people really invest hard into this specific area, forgetting about the soft skills, but we're still humans. We are interacting with other humans, with other engineers. So I think for me, it's a person who's proficient at the hard skill level, but actually even more proficient at a soft skill level. So they're a good negotiator, good communicator, uh, probably good leader, but it depends if you want to uh, want to be a leader. So, yeah. I love that. It ties really well with what Trevor was just saying. So. Yeah. But, all right. Time is yours. We are all listening. I'm really excited to talk today about testability. I think it's an important topic. It's something that a lot of uh, teams and, and individual developers struggle with. And uh, if you go online and you research testability, you ask, what is testability? You're probably going to get an answer along these lines. So testability is a measure of how easy it is to test software. And OK, let's assume it is. So. In a very contrived example, we can say that like here's a very simple function, like a sum function, just uh, receives two numbers and returns the addition of them. Uh, a pure function without dependencies, without side effects, so it's fairly easy to test. It doesn't need any setup. Very easy. We love these functions. We should strive towards building functions like this. And in the contrast, there can be more complex logic like this update user. Uh, obviously doing a bunch of stuff here, like connecting to a database. This is all a pseudo code. Connecting to a database and then like opening user's collection, trying to find the user by ID and update the user, maybe doing some error handling. Objectively, the function itself does much more than the previous one. So it's going to be harder to test. You're probably going to have to mock a connection to the database, maybe model specific scenarios in the database where the users exist or not. So yeah, this is hard to test, right? So we should maybe consider refactoring it, making it cleaner. And I don't personally agree with this differentiation, but let's assume that that's what it is. So how can you improve the testability of your code based on that definition? Well, what I find often as, as an advice is just write better code. So if you write good code, if you follow all the engineering best principles, you will arrive at the great testability. And to some degree, that is true. But you may also be wondering, well, I am writing the best code I can. I, I'm doing my, you know, my best job. I think this code is well enough. It does its purpose. But I still feel like testing it is a bit of a struggle. I don't enjoy the testing process. It feels like a chore. And this is what I would like to explore today. Uh, first of all, by exploring and, and uncovering a few truths about testability, but also hopefully giving you some tips uh, and advice that you can apply in practice, something I try to do and something that helps me test better code. And uh, 
The first truth would be that the easiness of testing code has nothing to do with testability. As contradictory as it sounds, uh, that's actually true. And I can give you a little tale, tale of two engineers to illustrate that. So imagine you have some feature in your product and it needs testing. And you, you give this feature, you give this assignment to write a test to two engineers. So the first one has been working in this company on this product for like 10 years. And the second engineer perhaps joined the company just recently. And who do you think will write a better test for this particular feature? Uh, in, in my opinion, that, that's hard to answer. There's so many different aspects that affect the test, how proficient the person is with the language, with testing, testing in general, like what kind of mental models they have, what practices they use, but also how familiar they are with the code itself and the product the requirements and so forth. But I think it's safe to say these two people will arrive at different tests, different in terms of quality. And this begs the question, how can the same code result in two different tasks if it's all about you know the easiness specifically because maybe for the experienced engineer it can be much easier to test this code than for a new hire and this can even be simplified to just one person to just you if you look back at the code that you wrote maybe a couple of months or years ago and you look at the test for that code you can probably say like gosh i i probably should improve this i know how to improve this this test can be much better now and does it mean that this code that's been lying around for years has improved and gained better testability somehow? I don't think so. I think the only thing that improved is you gaining more skills and basically tackling this testing challenge in a different way. So it's easier to you. And that's where I believe that terms like easy or difficult, they don't belong in conversations about testability because they're inherently subjective, they're relevant. So maybe something that's easy to test for you will be very hard to test for the person sitting next to you. And uh, this comes to the, to the next truth, is that you cannot really talk about testability based on the source code alone, because um, the, the truth is that both the source code and the test, they derive from the safe, same place. So you have some intention in mind. So you want your application, your software to do something like display something in the UI, or maybe make some HTTP requests, communicate with other services and so forth. So you use your programming language, you implement that, you basically translate your human intention to the machine code, the code that the machine can understand and run for you. But then you also write tests, which are a little different because tests to serve as a, as a description of your intention. So you basically describe what you intended at that point of time, and then you run your test against any implementation. And you probably heard that you should avoid testing implementation details. And that's because this is precisely the relationship. There is no uh, relationship implementation between implementation and test. And in fact, the, the less tests know about the implementation, the better, because you don't leak unnecessary details to test. So it's hard to look at the source code alone and say whether it's testable or not. I think uh, I can give one example here that this is one of the common pieces of advice I find online on how to improve testability. And it's related to dependency injection. So uh, this is a class component, uh, the car class component in JavaScript. And what it does, it uh, has this engine field and it creates a new engine instance. And then in its uh, start method, it just calls this engine.start. And what people uh, argue sometimes is that, well, this is not a very testable code because it has this dependency on engine. It's created internally. Maybe it's a private property engine. And this way, it's harder to test because we'd have to account for this dependency somehow, maybe mock this engine.js module, maybe come up with something else. And what is proposed often is to uh, do a dependency injection. So instead of creating this engine instance, uh, why not make the start method or maybe the constructor uh, of this class uh, accept this engine as an argument? So from outside and then just calling engine.start. This is a very by the book example. And why I think it's not entirely um, applicable is because you don't really uh, improve much by changing the code. You don't improve the stability by changing the code. What, what actually happens, you just rewrote the code and now it requires a different testing approach. And to me, this is even a little dangerous because it can uh, easily trap you into thinking that, well, I, I should design my software around how well it's tested. And it's dangerous because, well, it effectively leads to the software that is uh, absolutely terrible, but it's so easy to test. And uh, the reason for that is that you don't really write software for you or for tests, you write it for the users, for the consumers of that software. So be it a customer or maybe a, another developer. And uh, to me, this is crucial. And uh, this helps me define the testability as I see it in a more practical way that 
Testability is a relationship between the complexity of your software that you're trying to test and the complexity of the testing setup. Because again, both tests and, and your code derive from the same intention. And when you observe this, the complexity relationship is where you can reason and talk about testability. Um, and this is uh, basically leading me to the next truth, which is uh, the fact that testability is as much about the testing, uh, about the code that you're testing as much as it is about the testing setup. Again, this relationship. So one of the um, things that I like to advise people to do is obviously follow best uh, software design development practices. They're still valid, obviously, but keep in mind that you should, doing it, should be doing it based on the intention that you need to fulfill because you're building software to do something, not just to be testable. And there's something else too. I, I really think that uh, testing setup is one of the most underappreciated phases of testing. This is what I see a lot of companies uh, fail at because what happens is that you, you, let's say you wanna have this intention, I want to start testing the software. Maybe it's coming from you as an engineer, maybe it's coming from the higher ups. And what ends up happening is that you're grabbing some probably crucial feature or behavior of the product and you're spending like a week or weeks just trying to design this box for this feature just to run. And in fact, when, when people encounter bad testability or try to kind of learn how to improve testability, it's often a sign that the testing setup is missing. And uh, here's a couple of things that I like to do to, to improve the testing setup is first of all, to choose the right test environment. So if you're building an Angular application or a Vue application, and it's meant to run in the browser. So make sure to test it in the browser as well. So pick up the right tools and configure them so they actually resemble the environment where the code is run for your user. And then the next thing, perhaps the most important in my opinion is investing into mocks and test utilities. So if your app does a lot of uh, HTTP calls or maybe database connections, try to see how you can model utilities around those uh, scenarios. So mocking them becomes a brief. And the same is true for, for utility functions, for helper functions. So if you need to go through 10 different steps to just put your tested system into the right state, consider uh, like surgically extracting what steps are necessary, what steps your consumers, your users are doing and putting them into utility functions. Because ideally, I believe that testing should feel more like playing with Lego bricks than being a chore. You just need to figure out what kind of intention you want to verify right now in this particular test and just reach out to your utility library, to your testing setup, and just compose the things you need to arrive at that state, to assert that state. And of course, it's not something you can just solve once. The software itself is like a living organism. It's gonna uh, evolve and change as new and requirements come in, and maybe things just get refactored or, or deleted. And that will affect the complexity of the software. It will affect the testing strategy too. So make sure to iterate on that, observe it over time, uh, speak with other people, just like was mentioned. So it's important because you're likely not developing this alone. So reach out to your colleagues, reach out to your QA engineers and ask them what prevents them from enjoying testing. And most of the time, they will be feeling like they don't have the right environment. Because I believe that testing itself is really fun, but what makes it a hassle and a chore is that you need to create this environment. And you often feel underappreciated doing it as a part of your testing task that you need to complete in like two days. But this effort to create this testing setup actually takes like weeks potentially. And again, you can solve it once, it still needs reiteration and improvement and so forth. Um, a little of uh, about me, uh, you can find me as Ketnaito everywhere on the internet and I have a blog at ketnaito.com. I write about all sorts of random things, not necessarily testing, but as, uh, as was mentioned, I joined Epic Web to help teach people about automated testing. And I have a bunch of useful articles already published there uh, around all uh, spectrum of automated testing. And my ultimate goal is to build this series of workshops that you can go through by yourself. Uh, I will still be there uh, helping you, but I'm not gonna be kind of a, in a course uh, environment. You will be solving actual problems and then basically bouncing off them with me and you can already go and get the first workshop which is called testing fundamentals and i think it's a great great way to start with automated testing anything especially if you haven't done it at all or are afraid of it so definitely check it out and yep that's basically it thank you